Hey, it's Becky. Today, I'm making a robot that protects my privacy by covering up my webcam when I'm not using it. See, I've used stickers and post-it notes to cover up my webcam for years for peace of mind that my webcam is only accessible when I want. But it's hard to remember to replace the sticker after each meeting, and I've been looking for an excuse to try building a simple robot companion anyway. So I set out to design this webcam privacy friend, a motorized and 3D printed eyeball that sits atop my screen. There's a micro servo in the eye that moves the eyelid to cover and uncover the webcam. This project stretched my skills and went through many iterations. I designed the parts using Tinkercad, which has a micro servo object I was able to design around. I don't have much experience creating robots with personalities, so I sought the advice and encouragement from my friend Odd J, an insanely imaginative robot maker in LA. I caught up with him over video chat. Can you talk to me about your biggest sources of inspiration for your robots? Yes, biggest source of inspiration. Man, probably the character design background with my art degree, but mostly Mostly it's like mythology storytelling because my Spunder robot, which is like my biggest one, I keep rebuilding one well, like number nine now, is based off of um, African mythology of the god of storytelling. And I kind of use those stories and kind of like mix them into my work constantly. And that's kind of how that started. I still have this other Aussie V9 mini on my desk and he's all super cyberpunky because I'm trying to add like graffiti to him as well. Fun. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, I've known this one and a lot of stories with cyberpunk, other robots have graffiti on them, but I never see it other than like in a movie. So I'm like, I need to work on that. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm I'm 100 percent working on stuff like that. I get inspired from everything, anime, movies, TV, um, watching stuff on tested, which I do constantly now. I probably have a problem. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I like that channel too. Um, so here if I push the button, then the little the <laughs> and like, I mean, I can still see you. A yeah, bit, but... this is the the this one that just came off the printer is going to be a better fit. Um, the one that's there right now doesn't; it's not seated properly. So yeah, of course, it'll come down like a little further, like that kind of deal. Um, <laughs> that's actually really cool. <laughs> Thank you. And so here's here she is. And when I push the oh, my button keeps coming out of the breadboard. Um, I shall close her eye. That is beautifully clever. Two ideas. One, at the end of the eyebrows where you have it there, if you take some fabric or some really like loose stuff and like cut it up, you can make it look like a really like cool eyelash. Oh, okay. Also, if you can make the opening for the servo kind of slow, like don't make mm -hmm. it too fast, like kind of slow it down a bit. So it's like a like an old sunrise type of look, like when you mm -hmm. first it up and you just kind of like see your eyelashes just a bit, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, like a little more a little more sleepy. Yeah, like a little more sleepy, like a sleepy eye just woke up. Yeah, it'll still cover up everything from everyone to really see, but it gives like this like life feeling, like there's okay, cool. is that type of thing. And then when it pops up, it'd be like, oh, okay, now we're back to full screen. We're back into like professional mode to get the meeting through. Uh, cool, that's awesome, thanks. Later. Thanks, Jay. Please go check out his work at the link in the description. After talking with Jay, I improved the joint between the servo and the eyelid, and experimented more with the front edge. I ended up with two versions, one with lashes and one without. I added an iris and a pupil to the eyeball and printed them in different colors. If you've been following along on Instagram, you know that it took several iterations to get it right, from the fit on top of my Mac to the opening for the servo motor to fit just right. One thing Jay encouraged me to do was accumulate several small changes to the 3D design before printing another version, and make manual alterations to the parts in the meantime, like cutting and drilling holes. This reduces the amount of time I'll spend sitting around waiting for the next part to be done printing, and also reduces plastic waste. You can download all the code and 3D parts for this project at the link in the description. I put together a step-by-step -step tutorial so you can follow along to build your own. I used CA glue to attach the iris and pupil to the eyeball, and the lever arm to the eyelid.
The circuit centers around a Trinket M0 microcontroller hooked up to a micro servo through a long extension cable. A momentary switch triggers the motor to move. I prototyped with just the push button before adding a real-time clock module and a potentiometer to build the timeout feature. The potentiometer brings in an analog reading which I've programmed to translate to a number of minutes, after which the eyelid is programmed to close and cover the webcam. I can still manually close it with the push button too. After I had managed to get everything working on a solderless breadboard, I created a more permanent soldered version using pieces of proto board. I stashed everything in this metal enclosure I've had kicking around. I put the pot and the button on one board to fit on the interface side and used wire to bridge over to another piece of board with the trinket and real-time clock. While I wish all webcams came with an automatic physical cover, I loved the excuse to customize my setup for my own needs. If you want to make your own, you can find the free files and tutorial at the link in the description. In the future, I could see adding some ability to control it from the computer as well, like opening when you enable your camera in Zoom. Let me know how you would make it your own in the comments. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads and subscribe to my email newsletter and find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This video was made with generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships.